Good evening. This is the March 3rd, 2016 meeting of the North Hampton City Council. My name is Ryan O'Donnell. I'm the council vice president, and I will be presiding tonight. And we'll begin, as we always do, with a period of public comment. It's an opportunity for members of the public to speak on any issue you wish. We only ask that you keep it to three minutes or less. And the only other guideline is uh, it's one of the few times when your elected officials can't respond and go back and forth with you because our rules prohibit it. And the reason for both these guidelines is just to make sure that everybody is heard fairly and receives equal time. And so with that, let me ask the first person I have signed up to come on up, and that is Hildegard Friedman. And if you give your name and address for the record, please. Hildegard Friedman, 137 High Street, Apartment 130, Building O. I didn't rehearse, so I will respect your beep. I had a wonderful day, and I didn't rehearse. Uh, Rights and Round Table uh, wants to assure you that I did not walk in that door wrong, alone. I walked in with PM, I walked in with Wendy Mazza, and with Cindy Murphy in the mayor's office. I had a, what to me was an important dog issue moving in. It was nothing in the frame of reference of life. I couldn't imagine a city in the United States that was more cogently, uh, uh, helpful, articulate, they knew their jobs, compassionate, so you're stuck with me, even when I'm bad. Uh, Rights Around Table is now more involved with transitions that I've gone through in the last few days in investigations on its own. It Rights Around Table is a salon, it's fundraising, it's, it's lots of things with an endeavor, a civil rights endeavor to guarantee the rights of Americans, but it is now investigations. And before I tell you what I'm here to discuss, which is the uh, $5 million grant uh, that Pittsfield got, anti-crime grant, before I, I tell you that, I want you to understand uh, that I, with the FBI, Lou Tulick, T-U-L-I-K, did an anti-terrorist study in Beckett in July and August of 2014. Uh, I was in Rob Lewis's office either on the 13th or 15th of September 2015, uh, which is at the eighth floor of the TD Bank building, so you know that I was there because you, for terrorist reasons, they don't tell you. The grant is on its way. I don't know if it's going to take you a year or more, but I've been in touch with John Cartledge, and I guess I finished that role relationship. I'm moving on to my own things, but, but it's going to happen. And he has been in touch with the mayor and in touch with, I can't name the police officer that I know in Pittsfield, and who really knows the frame of reference <coughs> of what happened in the chief there and the grant writer for political reasons can't be with them. So we're on our way, and that's a very important move. It gives subsidized employment. It gives an opportunity for justice, which is a magic word if you can figure out what it means, and it definitely law enforcement. So you people have the newspaper clipping, and that's on the way. And thank you so much for helping America. Thank you Did very I stay much. within my... Thank you. Thank you. Um, you'll forgive me if I mispronounce this, but the next person I have is, is it Promod Warrior? Yes, sir. Hi, good evening. My name is Promod Warrior. I'm the owner of the Bombay Royal Restaurant at the One Roundhouse Plaza. I'm here to personally invite all the councillors for the grand opening uh, and the inauguration of the restaurant on March 7th at 4.30 p.m. on a Monday. The inauguration is by, done by the mayor, so I'm just here to invite the council members to be present there. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you for the invitation. Are there any other uh, members of the public who'd like to speak tonight? Anybody? No? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, well, then, before we convene tonight, 
Uh, let me let me first note um, with sadness the passing of former city councilor uh, Bill Ames. Uh, I think we all knew Bill Ames as a man of great conviction and principle um, throughout his life, someone who devoted a um, substantial portion of his life to public service um, on behalf of the city of Northampton. And I should say that doesn't just include the city council. It means a lot of work in the community, too, um, working on peace and, and social justice issues. So. At this time, I'd like to request a brief moment of silence in honor of uh, Councillor Evans. <laughs> Thank you very much. Well, we have a quorum present this evening, so we will convene, and I would ask the administrative assistant to please call the roll of the city council. Councilor Adams. Here. Councilor Bidwell. Here. Councilor Carney. Present. Councilor Klein. Here. Councilor Labarge. Present. Councilor Murphy. Here. Councilor O'Donnell. Here. Here. Okay, first is the announcement of a public hearing. Uh, this is by order of the City Council. A public hearing will be held on Tuesday, March 22nd, 2016 at 5 p.m. right here in the City Council Chambers. This is required by uh, the Charter. And it is a hearing to uh, discuss the capital improvement program uh, submitted by the Mayor for the next five years, um, fiscal year 2017 to fiscal year 2021. And so again, that hearing will be held Tuesday, March 22nd uh, at 5 o'clock right here in the City Council Chambers. Also for the benefit of the public, let me announce another hearing. This is the second hearing we're holding on the proposed water and sewer rates submitted by the Mayor. And this hearing will be held um, on Wednesday, March 9th, 2016 at 6 o'clock in the City Council Chambers. And that is a, a finance committee meeting that is also a city council meeting. So that's water and sewer, Wednesday, March 9th um, at 6 o'clock. All right. Any uh, one-minute announcements from councilors this evening? Council Chair? Um, on Wednesday, March 30th, is the annual NEF Spelling Bee. That's um, at the dinner. There's a dinner at 5, not like a sit-down dinner, but you can get dinner there. And then the spelling bee starts at 6, um, and that's at JFK Middle School. I know that they are still looking for sponsors and or teams. So if anyone's interested, please go to the NEF website and contact them. <coughs> Get involved. Thanks. Thank you. Any other announcements? All right. Um, communications and proclamations from the mayor. Mr. Mayor, do you have something to communicate today? Yes, I do. Good evening, counselors. Um, I actually have two proclamations that I wish to issue this evening, um, and uh, we have some uh, guests here to accept them. Um, the first one is entitled Brain Injury Awareness Month, uh, March 2016. Whereas 2.4 million Americans sustain a traumatic brain injury each year, contributing to one-third of all injury-related deaths in the United States, and whereas 5.3 million Americans live with long-term disability as a result of traumatic brain injury, and whereas the leading cause of traumatic brain injuries are falls and motor vehicle crashes, and whereas brain injury does not discriminate, it is unpredictable in its consequences, affecting who we are, the way we think, act, and feel in a matter of seconds. And whereas there are many ways to reduce the chances of traumatic brain injury, including wearing seat belts while in any motorized vehicle, using appropriate headgear for sports participation, removing hazards from the home, making living areas safer, and performing regular safety checks in recreational areas, and whereas improved treatment, better access to care, education, and responsible legislation are major considerations when addressing needs surrounding brain injury, but the most powerful tool is prevention. Now, therefore, I, Mayor David Harkins, <coughs> to hereby proclaim the month of March 2016 to be Brain Injury Awareness Month in Northampton. 
Let us support organizations and programs that assist residents with traumatic brain injury along with their families, but also educate our community about the extent, causes, consequences, treatment, and prevention of traumatic brain injury. In witness whereof, I have set my hand and imprinted the city seal this third day of March. So I, I'm pleased and, and always uh, proud to call up to receive this Mary Collier, who is a local ambassador uh, uh, working around these issues of brain injury in our community. And it's so great to see you. And Thank you, Mr. So proud to present that to you Thank and you. give you a moment to address the council. First of all, good evening, city council members. I appreciate this moment to speak. Um, first of all, what I wanted to show you, yes, hold up. This is a book. Um, and I apologize, it's called Chicken Soup for the Soul, Recovering from a Traumatic Brain Injury. It's, it's 101 Stories of Hope, Healing, and Hard Work. The author was at the conference last year, and she talked. Um, as a survivor, I'm not going to stand here and tell you that life is peachy and that everything is wonderful, because you know what? I'd be lying to you because it's not. Um, there are going to be times when I have a really hard time and I know it, and what ends up happening is I have to go get a little help. And being a little help, there are certain words, um, just get a mental checkup, let me put it that way. And there was a poem that someone wrote in this book, and I really hoped when I read it to you, you'll understand that as a person living in the community, and as there are people in your community today who do have brain injuries, all we want and all we really want is your support and help when I, um, for this issue, ServiceNet is the agency that I, that I t who runs my home, okay? Um, they have a building on King Street and down here in Northampton. Every 13.5 seconds, somebody in the United States falls and hits their head. There are 3,022 people in the state of Massachusetts waiting for a home. That's three Gillette stadiums back to back. That's pretty scary. Um, and this is one poem that I actually use that helps me every single day. <coughs> and it's called, Who Am I? There was a time when I was not like this, but now the tables have turned. And I am not sure who I am or what I have become, especially since now I am not who I used to be. Communications breakdowns can't seem to find the words or understand when spoken to. Anger, frustration, Anger, confusion, frustration, depression, it's sometimes a desperate and overwhelming situation. Feeling lost in so much confusion and loss and losing my confidence in what I do, what I say, or what I do. And although I have a nature, natural instinct to survive, just hear my cries. For right now, I just need friendship, and understanding, no false promises or lies. So please don't walk away, walk out and slam the door on me. For the memories of my past will always remind me of who I once used to be. But I have the ambition and I have the drive <coughs> and I will find the means to survive for what I will be and who I want to be. Ladies and gentlemen, I talk, do all these talks to the high school students and I'm really, really wanting to or talk with more people about how important this issue is. My life was changed the minute I fell. Now and now more as I get older, the scars from when I had my surgery have started to show up. And I'm not even ashamed of them. They don't tell people who I am. Who am I now? 
I'll tell you, and that's very, very easy. My name is Mary Noel Collier. I'm a brain injury survivor, and every day that I get to live makes me happy. Please, if you're willing to talk to me about understanding and doing more education or to open to open group talks, I'm more than willing to. Thank you very much for your time, and have a wonderful evening. Thank you, Mary. Thank you, Mary. Thank you very much again, Mary, for, for the work you're doing. The second, um, the second proclamation I have to issue uh, this evening um, is entitled Tibet Day, uh, March 10th, 2016. Whereas March 10th, 2016 marks the 57th anniversary of the Tibetan National Uprising Day, when Tibetans took to the streets of Lhasa to protest China's invasion and occupation of Tibet. And whereas despite China's best efforts to assimilate and wipe out Tibetan identity and its culture, Tibetan resistance continues nonviolently to this day. And whereas this year is especially noteworthy for Tibetans because the Dalai Lama, who is the global icon of compassion and peace for every Tibetan, is currently in the United States for medical treatment. And whereas Tibetans throughout the world and in our community are planning to gather in prayer for a speedy recovery for the Dalai Lama and to pay tribute to the brave men and women who have given up their lives for freedom and democracy. And whereas our vibrant Tibetan American community has made tremendous contributions to the city of Northampton's society and culture. Now, therefore I, David J. Narkowitz, Mayor of the City of Northampton, do hereby proclaim March 10th, 2016, to be Tibet Day. And I urge all the citizens of Northampton to take cognizance of this event and participate fittingly in its, in its observance, in witness whereof I have set my hand and affixed the seal of the City of Northampton. And I have here uh, a member of the local Tibetan community, Mr. Sering, as well as the president of Students for a Free Tibet uh, from UMass, uh, Ms. Nengpa. And I'd like to ask them to come up and uh, receive this and to say a few words to the council. <coughs> Thank you very much. Thank you. To you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Oh. So the floor is yours. Um, thank you again uh, to the members of the City Council. Uh, my name is Thundup Tsering. Um, I own the Tibetan restaurant here in Northampton. I uh, have been in the Valley for the last 15 years, and I'm extremely, extremely grateful to the Amherst Northampton community for your support for Tibet. Um, Tibet is going through one of the darkest periods in its history. Um, the 2016 Freedom House uh, report has found Tibet to be the second worst country in the world um, after the war, war torn Syria uh, in terms of lack of freedom and liberty. Um, just the other day, China has declared a lockdown on Tibet, uh, which means no one can go inside Tibet, uh, no one can leave Tibet. Um, so no diplomats, no journalists, uh, no tourists, no Tibetan Americans can go to Tibet. Um, behind the Holocaust and um, behind the Himalayas <coughs> mountains, I believe there is a Holocaust that is happening. That really needs um, attention, and your support is extremely urgent and much appreciated. Uh, I just returned today from the eighth annual Tibet Lobby Day from Washington, D.C., where I had a chance to uh, meet with our representative, Congressman Jim McGovern, and also Senator Warren, as well as Senator Markey's office, uh, where we are working on certain House resolutions on Tibet. Um, I would urge um, city council members, as well as the members from the Northampton community, as well, to support those. Uh, on March 10th, we will be uh, doing a, a solidarity fast from 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. Um, we'll be distributing materials as to why we're doing the fast, some fact sheets about Tibet, and I invite uh, members from the city council and the community to come join and show your support. Thank you once again. Thank you. 
Good evening. Um, my name is Kay Sung, as the mayor introduced. I'm from UMass Amherst, uh, Students for a Free Tibet chapter there. And I just wanted to thank everyone for the proclamation tonight and for supporting Tibet. Um, I just wanted to share that this morning I heard about a 16-year-old Tibetan by the name of Dorji Turing. He passed away this morning at a hospital in India. And um, three days ago, on February 29th, he set himself on fire for the Tibetan cause to shine light on the Tibetan issue and the genocide that's happening inside Tibet. And on the same day, there was a Tibetan monk in Tibet by the name of Kyesang Wangdu. He also self-immolated three days ago to shine light on the Tibetan issue. And just a few weeks ago, a Tibetan writer and an educator by the name of Shokjang was sentenced to prison. So they are all trying to bring peace inside Tibet, but of course the results have not shown. <coughs> and I just wanted to thank everyone for their support. And UMass Students for Free Tibet will be hosting a vigil inside campus on March 10th. Um, it will be from 2 to 3 p.m. outside the student union. So I ask everyone to join us at um, UMass Amherst, and um, we'll definitely be reading the proclamation. And once again, thank you all for supporting Tibet and for the proclamation. Thank, thank you both, and thank you for your activism on this. We appreciate it. So that, um, that concludes communications from the mayor, I, I take it? I think we can assume that it does. <laughs> uh, we're up to resolutions now. And so we're at item 16.023, resolution to oppose the Trans-Pacific Partnership and any similar trade deals if they fail to restructure the misguided and failed policies of the past. I assume the council wishes to waive reading on the second reading. Okay. Um, so without objection, we will waive the reading. Is there a motion for uh, a positive, uh, to approve <coughs> this resolution on second reading? Okay. Second? Second. Uh, discussion on the resolution? Yes. Uh, Councilor DeBarge. Um, I received a call from, which a lot of you know, Patty Healy, in regards to um, this resolution. And her and I had a lengthy talk the other night, and it was something I did not know about, but she did. And I just would like to read it very quickly. Trans-Pacific Partnership threatens the public health and safety. Fast Track will allow the TPP <coughs> to go through Congress unchallenged. TPP will give giant health care corporations the right to privatize national health care systems, will allow pharmaceutical companies to inflate drug costs in the United States, will allow drug fir firms to create monopolies on drugs allowing them to charge higher prices. This will especially affect people who need special meds for HIV, AIDS, and certain cancers, and rare autoimmune diseases. We'll give drug companies a role in government policies on what drugs will be included in Medicare and Medicare programs and prices will weaken our food safety system and the FDA. Many unions are opposed to fast-tracking the TPP, including the National Nurses Union. And that information was from Patty Healy, who is also in the Nurses Association in the union. Other discussion? Councilor Klein? Well, I just want to say that uh, in our, our last meeting, we had several counselors abstaining and voting no, um, saying that they hadn't been able to, um, didn't know about the TPP and didn't just didn't have enough information to take a vote, a positive vote. And we've had two weeks since our first vote, and um, I really hope that people had a chance to do the research that um, this legislation, this ordinance, ordinance resolution deserves. And um, I wanted to read as well 
a short-ish statement that the National um, American Friends Service Committee put together with a couple of basic facts. Um, so if approved by Congress, the TPP would set rules governing approximately 40% of the global economy. Frighteningly, this pact puts corporations firmly in the driver's seat shaping health, <coughs> environmental, and economic policies around the globe. The TPP's investor state dispute settlement, ISDS, provisions would enable investors from any of the 11 participating countries to challenge environmental and public health laws, <coughs> regulations, and court decisions in international tribunals that circumvent the U.S. and any other country's judicial system. A number of smaller free trade agreements and bilateral investment treaties already grant these powers to transnational corporations, and they are being used to attack clean air rules in Peru, mining laws in El Salvador, a provincial fracking moratorium in Canada, and a court decision against the oil giant Chevron in Ecuador among many other examples. Expanding the system throughout the Pacific Rim would only increase the occurrence of these challenges and further open governments to lawsuits costing millions or even billions of dollars for protecting their citizens. The ISDS provisions alone are reason to sink the entire TPP deal, but that's just one of the concessions that over 600 corporate advisors to the negotiations have inserted that will guarantee corporate profits while harming the rest of us. Under the TPP, U.S. exports of fracked natural gas would automatically be deemed in the public interest, bypassing certain environmental and economic reviews if going to any of the 11 TPP countries. Sorry. In addition, the TPP is full of language designed to delay the introduction of low-cost medications, and that's uh, a little bit uh, related to uh, what Councillor Labarde shared. Uh, that. It enables pharmaceutical companies to challenge members' uh, programs' cost-saving mechanisms. This threatens to increase health care prices and reduce access to medicine for residents of member countries, once again lining the pockets of the wealthy off the backs of the poor. The TPP, TPP may benefit some Wall Street executives, but it's a disaster for the environment and for public health. And the organization Public Citizen uh, kind of um, synthesized the 566 pages of the TPP and the three major points that it, it uh, wants Americans to know is that the TPP would make it easier for corporations to offshore American jobs. The TPP would push down our wages by throwing Americans into competition with, as an example, Vietnamese workers that are making less than 65 cents an hour. And the TPP would flood the United States with unsafe imported food. The deal would raise our medicine prices, uh, giving big pharmaceutical corporations new monopoly rights to keep lower cost generic drugs off the market. The TPP includes countries notorious for severe violations of human rights. The TPP will harm access to medicines in developing countries and Investor State Dispute Settlement, ISDS, empowers corporations to go to secret foreign tribunals to attack the laws we rely on for a clean environment, financial stability, affordable medicine, safe food, and decent jobs. Um, so if people didn't have a chance, if my fellow counselors did not have a chance to uh, do their research, if they could kind of take all of that in and make a decision of conscience, I think now is the time to change your vote. Thanks. Thank you. Um, uh, I guess I would just uh, reiterate some of the, some of the points that uh, Councillor Klein made, um, specifically around the investor to investor dispute settlements, um, investor to state dispute settlement that was one part of the TPP that Senator Elizabeth Warren um, was very concerned about in a in a speech that she gave before the Senate um, just this last year and really warned her fellow senators and um, also members of the House that this particular mechanism, um, this uh, private justice system, is something that really puts American laws, um, really undermines the legal system that we have, especially regarding worker rights and environmental protection. 
Um, I would also uh, just draw back to uh, Congressman McGovern's communication to uh, Council President Bill Dwight. Um, when he does actually um, <coughs> kind of uh, stress why uh, resolutions like this are important to him, and he says, the views of my constituents and the cities and towns in the second congressional district are very important in how I assess the merits of legislation and actually what he draws from when he uh, deliberates on these matters at the uh, national level. And so I, I think that, you know, we don't have, as I said last time, we don't have a lot of manufacturing left in Northampton. In fact, we have, you know, Cole Morgan is probably our uh, loan, aside from Florence Casket, um, we don't really have a lot of manufacturing to lose. But trade deals like this do put really the manufacturing base of this country at risk um, when they find that they can no longer compete around, uh, especially around labor uh, wages and conditions. So um, I also agree with Councillor Klein. I hope that folks have had a little bit of time to look up. It is a massive uh, trade deal, and as some po folks have pointed out, 6,000 pages in length, but it really does um, have uh, very dire consequences even for those of us here in Northampton. Any other discussion on the resolution? Um, yeah, I'll just say, I mean, I, I feel like my abstention last time was less about a lack of, of um, research or understanding, but more a recognition that, as you just said, this is an immense, not just an immense document, but something that has taken seven, almost eight years with 12 nations involved. It's, it's an incredibly complex thing. Um, and so it's more of a discomfort with us, m you know, me weighing in on something like that where even ha you can read it or you can hear everything people have to say about it. Um, <coughs> excuse me, having not gone through that process, it, you are never gonna know everything. That being said, um, I would say that I, I was, I think it was Councillor O'Donnell and Councillors Dwight and, and maybe others, <coughs> excuse me, um, I, how, what they expressed about sort of the corporatization um, of this sort of continued corporatization of, of um, sort of all aspects of our government was, it has resonated with me and, and that I feel sufficiently comfortable with um, voting for the resolution in, in particular on that point. Any other discussion on the resolution? <coughs> Ready to vote? Okay, well, I'll ask for a roll call, please. Councillor Bidwell. Abstain. Councillor Carney. Yes. Councillor Klein. Yes. Councillor Labarge. Yes. Councillor Murphy. Abstain. Councillor O'Donnell. Yes. Councillor Scherer. Yes. Councillor Adams. Yes. The resolution is uh, approved in second reading. Up to, uh, no presentations tonight. And we're up to the consent agenda. Um, I will read the items contained in the consent agenda and at the request of any uh, one counselor, an item may be removed for a separate vote uh, in the order in which it was removed. Otherwise, there is no debate um, about the consent agenda. It has the minutes of February 18th, 2016 uh, for that city council meeting. And it also has the reappointment of Natalia Munoz, uh, 63 Rick Drive, Florence, to the Human Rights Commission uh, for a term extending from December 15th to June, excuse me, December 2015 to June 2018. And because it has not received a recommendation from the Committee on City Services in the consent agenda, this will mean we are referring it to the Committee on City yes. Services. Okay. So, is there a motion to, is there any, any removals, first of all? Can I ask for clarification? You just said that we're voting to refer the reappointment? Yeah, it's, no, it's a reappointment coming from the mayor, and we need, every appointment has to go and receive a recommendation from the Committee on City Services, and so this will be uh, equivalent to referring it to the committee. 
and then it will come back and we'll have a separate vote on whether or not to make the appointment. So I'm, I don't know if this, it's appropriate to bring this up here, but from personal communication with Ms. Uh, Munoz, I understand that she's not interested in being reappointed. So I'm wondering if the mayor, if you um, have uh, had a direct conversation with her, if well, this is not well, appropriate. Let's do this. Are you, let's, you're requesting we remove this from the consent agenda. Oh, yes. I'm sorry. Okay. No, yes. That's fine. So it's removed from the consent agenda. Any other removals? Is there a motion to approve the consent agenda uh, just containing the minutes? Move to approve. Is there a second? Second. second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? Okay. Um, uh, well, Mr. Mayor, do you want to speak to the reappointment? I, I, I am not um, privy to that information. Uh, we reached out to her about being reappointed, which is why we put the re reappointment forward. Something may have changed, but I, I, have, um, I, I have not been notified of that. So um, if, if you would like to... Uh, refer it or if you'd like to continue it to the next meeting we can I just I don't um, I'm not privy to that information just a question of process then um, if this were to be referred is there enough time for the referral not so we wouldn't be able to take this up at the at the March 7th meeting it would mean that we wouldn't be able to take it up until April um, and then it's 45 would we still yeah, call within 45 days okay I, okay, Councillor Klein. Well, I don't want to throw a wrench in a, a potential process here, um, and something could have changed since I spoke with her. So I think that it's fine to go ahead and do the referral and to clarify before that meeting what the status of her interest is. Okay. Is there, is there a motion to refer this? To Wait, make a motion to refer. refer. Okay. Any further discussion on whether to refer to the Committee on City Services? All in favor of the referral? Aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Abstentions? Okay. Sort it out in committee. Um, well, at this time, we, we, we will recess for the Committee on Finance, starring Councilor David Murphy. Excellent. Okay. So, uh, we'll call the meeting to order and ask Pam to uh, read the roll of finance. Councilor Murphy. Here. Councilor Adams. Here. Councilor Carney. Present. Councilor Barton. Present. Uh, so our first item is to approve the minutes from our February 18th meeting. Move to approve. Second. Second. Right. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. <coughs> and now for uh, financial orders. We have two of those. The first one is upon the recommendation of the mayor, order that Torres Mass General Law 40C subsection 4A allows for joint operation of public activities among governmental units and Torres Mass General Law 40 Subsection 4A requires that such intermunicipal agreements be approved in a city by the city council and the mayor and whereas the city of Northampton provides services to and shares services with other municipalities. Uh, therefore, pursuant to Mass General Law 40C Section 4A, the city council hereby authorizes the mayor, the city of Northampton, to enter into the following intermunicipal agreements. To contract with the town of Williamsburg for a new public access pedestrian trail that will cross City of Northampton property to provide a new public access trail to the historic Williamsburg Reservoir Dam uh, and per the agreement which is attached. And then a contract with the City of West Springfield to provide for the use of a GMC activity bus for the West Springfield varsity baseball team for transportation to a tournament on March 25th, 2016, March 28th, 2016, per agreement. Do we have a motion to put it on the floor? Make a motion. Second. Second. All right. And the mayor is here to talk about it. Certainly. And I also, um, uh, Mr. Laurel is here from the DPW, uh, specifically if there are questions about the um, about the Williamsburg agreement. Um, uh, you have a copy of that agreement. Um, the the second piece with the West Springfield agreement, that's actually a, an, um, an agreement uh, between the, um, well, it's going to be between the city of West Springfield and the city of Northampton, but it's b between the athletic director in West Springfield and actually the athletic director of Smith Vocational. Um, apparently, Smith Vocational has a, a bus that's uh, well-sized for, uh, for this team uh, trip, 
and they they spoke amongst themselves. Uh, myself and the mayor of the new mayor of West Springfield has uh, has spoken. Um, he's actually also the former city solicitor. So um, all of the red flags that went off with my city solicitor, you know, I, I didn't have to explain them to him because he was the former city solicitor. Um, and but we we um, they've worked out uh, an intermunicipal agreement, and this will all be you know under their insurance, and the city will not be liable, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So um, so we I'm comfortable in bringing this forward, uh, this sort of cooperative request between the two schools. That's the piece on West Springfield. Um, and if you have uh, questions about the um, Williamsburg Agreement, again, we own uh, watershed land there, and this is a, a request for trail access, and so. Um, uh, that's what this agreement would uh, would allow that to happen. And I can ask, Mr. if you have questions for Mr. Lorla, he's here as well. Any questions on either of these, for the mayor or for Mr. Lorla? Mm -hmm. Hearing none, I guess we're good. Um, then without questions, all in favor of a positive recommendation for finance, say aye. 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 Any opposed? And then uh, the other order we have, in order to appropriate $30,825 from insurance proceeds to the police department OOM account. Order that in accordance with Mass General Law 44, Section 53 regarding insurance proceeds. The City Council appropriates $30,825 of insurance proceeds received from the property physical damage claim for police crews are damaged on, uh, in October of 2015 to the police department OOM account equipments slash automobiles. Do we have a motion on this for a second? Second. second. Okay. And, uh, I think it's pretty clear, but when the mayor returns, we'll let him tell us what's going on. I'm assuming it's just, oh, and he's back. Just someone from Williamsburg. I was just thanking them for coming tonight. For coming so. the um, uh, just the insurance, it's just an insurance settlement to get exactly. to the police to fix exactly. the property. Exactly. There was some um, uh, damage to one of our cruisers that resulted during a heavy rainstorm flooding event. and. Um, and so as the MGL outlines, if you have an insurance settlement over $20,000, it actually requires an appropriation. Um, if it's less than 20,000, the money just goes to the department and they're able to, uh, to expend it. But that's so we're out of respect for MGL, we're uh, seeking your authorization. Any other questions for the mayor on this? How the What's that? How was the damage? So um, there was a, uh, I believe it was in October of 2015, there was a heavy rainstorm and there was uh, isolated flooding in various parts of the city and officers were dispatched to um, set up sort of block off certain streets. This is actually in the North Street, Market Street area. Um, some of you are probably familiar with the underpass that goes under the bridge that in sometimes in heavy rainstorms there is um, water pools there and um, and so in going to get set up for uh, shutting down that street the officer drove through some uh, deeper water than they suspected and apparently it caused uh, the, the car stalled out um, and uh, and then um, upon bringing it to the uh, to the mechanic and eventually to the dealer, uh, it ended up requiring some significant uh, replacement of, I think, I think they essentially totaled the vehicle and replaced it um, because of the damage. So that's a cautionary tale to those of you uh, don't drive through deep. If you don't know how deep it is, don't drive through it. <laughs> uh, obviously the officer was not, uh, uh, was a little bit chagrined as well as you can imagine, but um, but again, it was during a you know during a, an emergency event, and they were going to basically try to block off other cars from uh, going through the wall. So, uh, any other questions for the mayor on uh, the flood? Of I wish I could tell you it was a high-speed chase and you know, something dramatic. And oh, we don't need the drama. Yes, exactly. A big, a yes. big puddles enough. No one was injured. <laughs> Um, so all in favor of a positive recommendation aye. of finance, say aye. 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 And uh, is there any new business? I don't know of any. So uh, we're going to adjourn finance. Adjourn. Second. All in favor? Aye. aye. Thank you. All right. So now the city council is back and <coughs> up to item 16.032, financial order for intermunicipal agreements with Williamsburg and West Springfield. Is there a motion to approve the Move order? Move to approve. Second. Any discussion on the order? Do you a roll call on this, please. Mm -hmm. Councilor Carney. Yes. Councilor Fine. Yes. Councilor Labar. Yes. <coughs> Councilor Lorla. Yes. Councilor Lorla. Yes. Councilor Fine. Yes. Councilor Fine. Yes. Councilor Fine. Yes. Councilor
Councilor Murphy. Yes. Councilor O'Donnell. Yes. Councilor Shearer. Yes. Councilor Adams. Yes. Councilor yes. Okay, the order is approved on first reading. Now up to item 16.033 in order to appropriate $30,825 from insurance proceeds to Police Department OOM account. Is there a motion to do this on first reading? Second. Any discussion on the order? Uh, could the roll be called on this as well? Councilor Klein. Yes. Councilor Labar. Yes. Councilor Murphy. Yes. Councilor yes. Councilor Sharon. Yes. Councilor Adams. Yes. Councilor Bidwell. Yes. Councilor Yes. Okay. That is approved on first reading too. No other orders tonight. Um, under ordinances, we have 16.032, an ordinance pertaining to water resources. The recommendation is to refer it to the Committee on Community Resources, Committee on Public Works and Utilities, and the Committee on Legislative Matters. Move for all. Second. Okay. Is this, Adams. Whole, is this the whole measure? Yes, it is. Oh. Yeah. Is there any desire for me to read it or? <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't think so. All right. Any uh, other discussion on the referral of the ordinance to the three committees? Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Abstentions. Okay. Thank you. Um, the council president is not here. Any updates from committee chairs this evening? Oh, just a reminder, and you mentioned it earlier in the evening, but that this coming week finance at its uh, meeting to consider the water rates will be holding a second public hearing. So uh, any councilor or member of the public that would like to come and comment on the proposed new water and sewer rates, please remember it, it, it's coming up. Can you give me the date again? It is March when, 9. Wednesday. March 9th. March 9th. And it's at 6 o'clock, am I correct? 6 o'clock. Here in the council chambers. Thank you. Okay. Any other updates from committee chairs? Um, information requests. We have one committee study request, which is a new animal. And um, I think it, it comes in the form of a letter, and I, it would be best explained just by reading the letter if it's time to the City Council. So I would do that now. Um, this letter is actually dated February 22nd, but it's being, I suppose, officially announced today. This is to the members of the Committee on Community Resources. Section 2.3.8 of the Council Rules provides that the Council President shall have the power to, quote, issue a committee study request to any committee. Such a request shall require a committee to report to the full council on a particular policy issue area within 120 days, optionally accompanied by legislation. Pursuant to this rule, please consider this request of the City Council Committee on Community Resources study issues relative to the local economy with a focus on business and workers in downtown Northampton and downtown Florence for the purpose of identifying practical recommendations, if any, that the City Council could pursue to strengthen the local economy. Because this is a large and multifaceted topic, the committee should choose which issues and policies are most important to address. Such issues may include the challenges facing businesses generally, commercial space vacancy rates, and so-called high rent blight, energy costs, licensing, city infrastructure, high-speed internet connectivity, and issues of workers' rights, wages, and working conditions, among others. Further, the committee should substantially involve the public by convening hearings and commu community meetings, soliciting testimony, and inviting discussion among citizens, representing a broad cross-section of Manhattan's <coughs> economy, including business owners, property owners, workers, academics, and residents. And this is from uh, William H. Dwight, City Council President, and Ryan R. O'Donnell, City Council Vice President. So that is the text of the request. Um, it's been posted on our agenda, so we, we could <coughs> have discussion on it tonight if uh, any councilors wish to do so. Councilor Adams. I just wanted to raise a point that <clears throat> uh, when I think about s some of what this study will encompass, um, I think of the water and sewer rates. And what I think of is that the water and sewer rates, we're under the gun to vote for that, which is why we're, we're rushing to do our second public hearing. And I feel like when this study is done, we will already have taken a vote on that. Mm -hmm. However, when I look at what this study is going to do, these are good things. It's going to discuss, amongst other things, the challenges facing businesses generally. And I'm sure the cost of doing business will, will be something that will come up. And when we talk, when it, when, and it's going to look at high rent blight as well. And, you know, one theory of, of, of high rent blight has to do with the cost of, of uh, doing business in Northampton. So it just makes me think that. Um, we're going to do this study after already having taken a very a, a, an important vote on a matter that's certainly t likely to impact businesses and certainly negatively, in my opinion. 
So um, it makes me think that that vote should be postponed till after this. And that only makes sense to me. And, and I understand that that means it could not be done in this year's budget. I fully understand that. But it can be done next year. And it can be revisited next year. So those are, those are just my thoughts. Mr. Mm -hmm. Carney? Uh, just to, um, a comment on this, just the, um, I'll, I'll say that I'll, I did have conversations with the council president prior to his um, sending out this study request. And some of this came from some press that had been in the Gazette specifically about issues facing workers uh, and the, um, the work of the Pioneer Valley Worker Center dealing with issues of wage theft, among other issues, um, and specifically the work that they're doing in terms of collecting data around that. So, but uh, Councillor Dwight was concerned with m broadening a study request to include issues that affected the local economy generally. And if we look at the scope, if we look at the scope of this and the 120 days that's there, any one of these issues could take 120 days. And so in su subsequent conversations, we're seeing that this 120 days is probably more just it's that it, we're not limited to continue working on these, but we just need to report back. It's not necessarily it doesn't necessarily mean that we will have some um, um, cohesive report that dealt with all of these issues, because I don't think that that could happen. I don't think that there's a way that we could um, do, as I said, any one of these issues could take 120 days to look at um, properly. So um, I think it's just a way to say that the, we're going to, as, and I, I guess I'll defer to to uh, Councillor Sierra because we do have a way that we're looking at trying to organize these, the scope of this request, and um, I understand what Councillor Adams is saying, but I I think that if we try to, I mean that there's so much that it can be seen to encompass, um, that it's going to be it's going to be a job to try to deal with all of the issues that are on this request. Councilor Bidwell. Um, I was just going to start off by, by thanking Councilor Shar for taking the initiative to schedule a special meeting of this Community Resources Committee Tuesday at 5 o'clock, correct? Yes. Where the, the committee can have a chance to hash this out a little bit because it is a, 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 a daunting uh, request in its, in its, in its, in its scope. Um, and I know this was primarily the, uh, at the initiative of Council President Dwight, but since Councilor O'Donnell, your name is on it too. Could you just share a little bit about what, what, you're, what you have in mind, what you're looking for? What, what, what's the product that, that, that you and the Council President imagined in, in authoring this request? Well, it shouldn't be too hard for you to find solutions to all these problems in pretty <laughs> short order. Um, I'm happy to, to speak to that briefly, Councillor. Um, personally, I don't <coughs> have any um, predetermined um, outcomes in mind, to be perfectly honest. I just know that we often pay lip service um, to how important the local economy is to Northampton. We often bemoan the problems that we face, but I'm not sure what the City Council has in terms of an agenda um, to take any steps to do something about it. Perhaps Perhaps there's not much we can do. I know the mayor has a, an economic development staff and program and has been successful in, in pursuing a variety of initiatives. Um, my question is, what, does the, what role does the council play? And so the study request is very open-ended, and I'm not sure what the result will be. Um, I actually think the committee it's being sent to is, is, has the perfect composition of counselors <coughs> to weigh all the different factors. And, um, I also think there's a value in bringing community members into the process to at least educate us on what's going on. I think most of the solutions are probably going to be found outside of the council chambers rather than within the council chambers. Um, I would like to see groups talk to each other who perhaps don't talk to each other as much as they should. Workers should be talking to business owners, business owners should be talking to property owners. 
um, because they're all part of the ecosystem of our local economy. So I, I hope that's vague enough for you. I, I don't have um, an outcome in mind, but if only to hear the concerns of a broad cross-section of, of the community in terms of the challenges we face and educate the council on what we may need to look at, um, I think there's some value in the study. My best answer at the time. I'll, I'll let other council, I, I do have something further to say later. Okay, we'll return to you. So Councilor Shara and then Councilor Clark. Um, I think it's actually, what I was gonna say has largely been covered, which is that yet yeah, since this is such, one, it's a, a completely new process for us to go through and such a gigantic topic to take on. Um, we're having a, an initial organizational meeting before our next scheduled meeting, so we can sort of dig into how we want to structure this and figure out um, you know, what we want to carve out and kind of get a roadmap on how we're gonna, what we're gonna cover in these next 120 days. Um, so, you know, if anyone's interested, we can, um, I'm not sure we post, we posted it also, did we post it also as a council meeting? Okay. So everyone's, you know, if anyone wants to sort of weigh in on that process or come in and hear what we're saying about how we're going to proceed, uh, we'd love to have you come to that meeting next week. Um, and just to Councillor Adams' point, um, yeah, I, <clears throat> I hear what you're saying. Yeah, I mean, I don't, I don't see how we're going to have anything comprehensive before we need to vote on water and sewer rates. Um, but it doesn't mean that what we what we learn or um, you know what we learn from this process can't inform us next year when we have to make that vote. But uh, it's I I, under, I see what you're saying on that. Councilor Klein, then Councilor Barge. Um, well, I sit on the committee that is um, <coughs> tasked with doing this. And I have to say that the first thing that came to mind <clears throat> when we received um, the agenda, and I saw this as a request for our committee, is um, clearly this is an issue that as counselors we need to be engaged with. You know, what's happening in our downtown commerce, um, in the city, all of that. But I also feel like we have a city staff member, Terry Masterson, who is essentially tasked with kind of looking at these big picture issues. And he has a certain expertise that has um, made him, you know, the staff person who does this kind of work. And so I'm wondering if, um, and maybe this is something we can talk about in our meeting on Tuesday, but I'm wondering if it doesn't make more sense for us to develop some points and questions that we want investigated and ask if the staff person um, can take care of them. Mm -hmm. Because uh, I feel like I don't want to recreate the wheel. I don't want to, um, I don't want to kind of step into territory that is Mr. Masterson's territory in terms of what he does in his job. Um, and I think that that's where the expertise lies. And I'm not sure that uh, you know, we individually or collectively are going to have exactly the right kind of expertise. So um, that that's kind of what I've been thinking about this, and I, we can certainly talk about it more on Tuesday. Tuesday? Tuesday. Yeah. Councilor Barb, would you mind if I made a quick response before, just, just to those points? Um, a, a couple issues. One, procedurally, you know, this is a new thing we're trying in our rules. It's an experiment. In our rules also provides that the committee could decline to re take up the request by majority vote. Mm -hmm. So um, my expectation is the committee will put it on the agenda for acceptance and they could vote it down. Um, that's one thing. And the other is um, there is a separation of powers issue that, that you raise um, because, of course, Mr. Masterson is, uh, is in the mayor's branch of government. And so um, perhaps the, the study is more about what we can do, but just a thought. Council of the Barge. Thank you. Um, I was going to bring up about our economic developer that we have working for the city, and I thank you for talking about that because I have to agree with what you say. I also have to agree with Councilor at Large, Jesse Adams, in regards to the language that was presented to us and also getting calls and talking with business people, and I'm down here every day, who are not happy about the increasing of what's occurring again. And I can see where the consular is coming from, and it's agree with consular share also. It's very difficult to go ahead 
and look at commercial here in this city when we've already had the stormwater utility fee, which is huge, and now they're getting hit with this. And I'm really concerned here about our business people here in the city of Northampton and also in Florence. It's, it's, they're just getting feed out of here, and I think we're going to lose people again. We're going to lose business people. Council. Um, just, I know we don't know the outcome of, you know, of where, where it's needed to study, but um, just is the ultimate goal hopefully for policy rather than just academic? Because I know some people felt that our vibrant sidewalks resolution discussion was possibly academic, I disagree. But anyhow, a lot of people felt that way. Is the ultimate goal hopefully policy-oriented rather than academic? Just to respond briefly, um, if there, I, I wouldn't want to make policy just to make policy. But if in fact, after hearing from business owners and workers and property owners, they tell us, hey, the city council should explore this and we have something to bring forward, I would be in favor of considering it personally. Well, but, but I'm not asking if, that's not what I'm asking. What I'm asking is, is, is I know, you know, I, what I'm asking is, is, um, is the goal policy. I mean, obviously, nothing worth, if there's, no, if there's no ordinance worth or no policy worth making coming from this, well, of course, we wouldn't make one. I understand that. Right. But I'm saying, is this, acad is the, is it, do you view this as academic or hopefully, possibly, if it makes sense and if it's appropriate to be something that produces policy, ultimately? Well, my, my take on that, Councilor, is the trick, uh, the trick of that is I think a lot of economic development is not necessarily tied to legislation. I think it's tied to economic development initiatives that, you know, the mayor has kind of a, a prerogative on. Um, and so it's an open question. I have, it, it would be an interesting, to, interesting exercise to see what other cities and towns have done um, and what policies they've made. Um, again, I'm not trying to be evasive, but that's my that's my honest answer because I don't really know the outcome of. And again, you know, the local economy it's 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 everything. It's it's almost like the Trans-Pacific Partnership. It's it's everything, um, and so what could come out of it is uncertain in my opinion. So it could potentially be academic. I mean, it could produce no legislation. It could produce a recommendation that we have a, a select committee to study something in more detail you know is that academic I don't know I think it could be worthwhile even if it doesn't produce an ordinance that's my opinion a um, couple other points um, to Councillor Klein's point about you know, I just I remember that we we're supposed to be getting these economic indicators I believe recall from Mr. Masterson so maybe at some point we've been promised those perhaps at some point they can finally be given to us um, <clears throat> another point um, the, the committee meeting is, is March 8th at 5, is that what it five is? 5 o'clock, yeah. And, f and finally, just my, my, my point before about the water and sewer fees is that my concern is that if we go ahead and pass that measure, which, which I believe will certainly have a negative impact from businesses, and, and, and that, that's also based not on just what I believe, but feedback I'm getting, and then, and then we go and do a study to find out what the concerns of the business community are after having just raised the cost of them doing business, I think on, I think that that could lead to this being looking like lip service, and that that's my point. Councillor Carney. Thank you. Um, a lot of our conversation right now is kind of what concerned me. I I, I was somewhat concerned with having the the scope broadened the way that it was in the study request. And again, I go back to conversations initially, um, and Councillor O'Donnell will, will back me up on this, but. This came out of some conversations that were initiated by the Pioneer Valley Worker Center, who came to counselors, several counselors, not, not breaking any uh, open meeting law, but um, concerned with um, issues of wages and, and conditions facing workers in the downtown area. And um, it was brought to my attention that there is actually a statewide concerted effort that tries to tackle the problem of wage theft, and it's something that, uh, that uh, Representative Colcott is signed on to at the state level. This is actually a, a, um, a concerted effort called Good Jobs, Strong Communities, and it really looks at the ways that uh, workers have either been um, undercut with um, not being paid minimum wage or prevailing wage or being paid 
food and lodging, food and board instead of wages and just waste. And so there has been a lot of work. There's a lot of data that's out there right now ready to be presented. It's, it's happening at five or six areas across the state of Massachusetts. The mayor of Boston um, created an executive order to deal with the issue rather than going through the city council. The city of Cambridge has an ordinance, an ordinance that came, that it actually, so they started with the ordinance and then it was referred to their committees where they had the discussions. We thought in the city of Northampton that instead of coming forward with a possible ordinance, and there are some, boil there are some uh, possible ordinances that you know, that we could look to in terms of other cities and towns regarding the specific issue of wage theft, <coughs> that instead we would kind of have the, have the conversation first, have, have the, um, a, probably a select committee. We talked about creating a select committee, which would require a resolution and a second, a couple of resolutions and bringing in community members and a number of, um, it would be a complicated <coughs> process. Instead, <coughs> we suggested that we might refer that issue, that issue of wage theft, along with a number of other issues that affect the local economy, to the Committee on Community Resources. But I'm afraid, and then this is why I've looked at it, I'm afraid just because the scope is so broad that the, the issue that brought us together in the first place could really get lost in the shuffle here. And so that's why I said, I, I, I mean, we know that there is, there, there has been data collected. There are 250, 300 surveys that have been circulated among workers in the city, um, specifically around this issue. And we've yet to hear, and I know that some of this will come up at our, at our organizational meeting. But as I said, the, it's so broad that that's why I was afraid. It's, it's, it's all well and good to say that we should be meeting, we should be bringing together businesses with workers, with property owners, and doing all of that. But again, I, I don't want to have the impetus that brought us together in the first place, that specific issue of facing workers regarding um, wages and conditions in the city of Northampton. I don't want to see that get lost in our effort to try to deal with a, such a, a, a huge issue as the local economy. And so I know, and I'm hoping that we'll have this conversation, but there are people who are ready to move. They're, they've got, they've, they've been organizing, they've been meeting, they've been gathering data, and they're ready to bring it to us. Um, but we decided that, you know, rather than have that be part of the, the you know, from an ordinance. But so to answer Councillor Adams' question, yes, there are some of us who are looking at ordinances, who are looking at some very specific policy issues and ways to, whether it be by um, executive order, I don't see the executive here, but that's what some cities have done. But we know that this is going on in Boston, in um, New Bedford, in Fall River, in Lynn, in Worcester, and, and at the state level. <coughs> And there is a little bit of a push to try to see what can happen at the municipal levels uh, um, before it actually comes to the state, which will be sometime in July. So I'm hoping that we can move forward with what we have, that we, you know, and, and not get bogged down by a really broad, a really broad scope. I do think that there's in, there's ways that a lot of these issues interact with each other. Certainly, high high rents and the high vacancy rate is, uh, uh, affects businesses, which in turn affects how workers are paid, and, and we can look at those intersections and bringing us together, but I don't want us to get too bogged down that we can't move forward with, with stuff that we're ready to move forward on. Thank you, Councillor Bidwell. Uh, I'd like to make uh, three points. First, first has to do with the, 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 the broad nature, and I, I totally agree that it's, <coughs> pardon me, that we need to bring more, more focus. And I, I guess m the, the bias that I would bring to the discussion we'll have about this on, on, on Tuesday is that we focus on the basis of where can we really make an impact. I, I, uh, there, are l there are lots of, there's lots of studies out there, but I would like us to focus on where can we realistically make a difference. Um, that would be with regard to are there, are there policies 
by way of ordinance that we can that we can implement as a council or in some cases are there specific recommendations we could make to the executive branch um, I, I think we should we should define it as what can we as a city be doing that would actually make it make it make a difference and if we if we can't make a difference I wouldn't be terribly interested in um, uh, a committee that provides a forum for a, a whole lot of debate and analysis and uh, exposition but without the likelihood of it actually going anywhere. So that, that would be the, 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 my, 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 my first point. And the second, uh, agreeing very much with Councillor Klein, there's, I, I would hate to see us reinventing the wheel, um, not only in, in, in the mayor's office, but uh, there have been various downtown business organizations, uh, uh, and a new one is being created as we speak. Um, and there have, there's been a great deal of survey work done of, 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 of property owners and business owners and tenants. And we should, um, to the extent that folks who've done that work want to share that information with us, uh, we should avail ourselves of that. There's a great deal of information in the real estate community. We have, we have very knowledgeable realtors who have a great deal of information to, 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 to shed on this, and including our distinguished uh, colleague, Councillor Murphy. So I think there's a, I mean, I, I take the name of the committee literally, the Committee on Community Resources. There's a lot of community resources out there, and I, I see this as an opportunity to draw on those, on those, on, on those resources, and there's a, there's a lot of data and a lot of expertise, so I would argue that that would be another basis on which we bring some, some focus, is where is there usable data that we can, that we can glom onto and make sense of without having to go out and, uh, and create it on our own. And then my third point would be that um, I would be quite comfortable proceeding uh, uh, pending a public hearing in finance on water and sewer rates and however that comes out. I'd be quite proceeding with the timetable that we've contemplated because I understand the importance of approval of those rates in relation to the, the, the process of developing a, a budget. And I wouldn't, and I personally wouldn't be worried about doing that prior to the or during the time that we're also having this, this, this other discussion, because my own hunch, uh, it's a hunch pending real data, is that if, if downtown Florence and downtown Northampton business owners were asked what are the, what are the top problems uh, that, 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 have you th that have you worried about the future of your business and the viability of your business and the, the, the prospect of your staying in Northampton, uh, right now, I'm not at all convinced that an increase in water and sewer rates would make it to the top five or the top ten. Maybe, maybe it would, but I, but I don't, I don't, I, I, I just don't have enough information there to think that we should hold up one for the other. That's just my, my, my view on that. With the with all due respect, Councilor Adams. Councilor Sharon. Um, uh, again, you know, I think we all are recognizing the enormity of this, and I certainly, since first seeing the request, have spent plenty of wakeless moments imagining the way of it. But I, I think that, um, you know, I, there's an important point to make, which is that the, the first of all, it's just request. Secondly, it, um, it, these are sort of examples. It says such issues may include. We don't need to cover all of these issues. And so this is why I wanted us to have a sort of initial meeting um, and, and I'm kind of grateful we're doing some of this work now because we have limited time at that meeting, so um, we're getting some of it done now. Um, so we, you know, we can choose how we want to approach this. We can choose how many things or um, if at all we want to take on. So um, I, I really view that as sort of our first order of business is figuring out what we want to do and then how we're going to do it. And that includes who we want to invite and you know who we want to bring to the table who have already has expertise or can can um, you know inform this process for us. So um, so I think you know we don't have to be too worried about how broad it is because it's up to us how broad we want it to be. Councillor Adams. I just want to respond to Councillor Bidwell's good points, but the <coughs> one thing I wanted to say was that I, I think that if, if you surveyed businesses, I, I bet that the vast, vast majority um, when citing obstacles would be the cost of business in doing Northampton, and I, I think of water and sewer fees and all fees as, as part of that. So <coughs> I agree with your points. Councilor Klein? 
I know we don't have a procedure about this um, directive that we've received, but is there any kind of way that we can call call this discussion? Because I feel like we're moving into yes, the territory of what the committee is supposed to be doing, and um, it just seems like it's, it's a little unwieldy. If it's the will of the council, we can wrap it up. It, now, does this require any vote at this point? No, it's just been issued. I'll, I'll put a coda on it by saying I already feel good about issuing this committee study request with Councillor Dwight because it's already started a huge amount of discussion. <coughs> and I think it's important for the City Council to be talking about what we can do to help the local economy. So I'm grateful for the discussion tonight. All right. Thank you. Any other, any new business tonight? Is there a motion to adjourn? So, so much. Second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you.